Thursday. I think we'd better wait and see if any of the other little girls are going to take the dancing lessons, too. Because huh? I just couldn't possibly drive you there every day, and I couldn't fit it in. Oh, oh dear. Mom, where'd you put the poster? Uh, over there by the lunches, honey. Uh, Harry, dear. I'm on the way. Good. Gee, Mom, this is great. Mm. I could use a couple of dozen. Oh, don't get any ideas. And you didn't finish your milk, honey. Go ahead. <laughs> oh. Thanks for typing this up, honey. What did you think? Well, I think it's a very profound speech. I didn't understand one word of it. Here, now take a little sip of that and hurry up, because you're going to be late, too. See the poster one made me doubt? Oh, there. Okay. Hello. Oh, good morning, Jane. This week? Oh, yeah. Bye, dear. Yeah, honey, I think I can manage it. How long are you going to be gone? Oh, that's just wonderful. Uh-huh. Well, have a good time. Okay, bye. I'm going to be your chauffeur next week, kids, so don't let me forget it, will you? Mrs. Collins is going on a trip to Florida. Mm -hmm. oh, there's Mrs. Davies. Hurry up, kids. Your oh, lunch is... Oh, time for a change. Yeah. And I want everybody to come home right after school. You understand? But, Mom, the PTA and we're singing. Aren't you going to oh, be there? Oh, of course, honey, I'm going to be there. I had it all written down. I wouldn't have forgotten it. Goodbye. Hurry up. Bye, Mom. And listen to you. Stuff that ballot box. Okay, Goodbye, Mario. David, honey, you're awful quiet this morning. You feeling all right? Yeah, I guess. Well, I have to give a speech this morning. Oh, well, if nothing else, honey, make it loud. Get your books, get your books under your chair, and get your jacket, sweetheart. Come on, honey, you'll be late. There you go. Fine, thank you. Uh, but would you please send someone over here right away? Uh, well, my dishwasher isn't feeling too well, and and I think my oven is a little haywire, too. Yeah, uh, thanks. And right away, thanks. that I handled in this area. Yeah. Well, look, let me put it this way, will you? If you, if you can't find anyone else to do it, then... I see. Uh-huh. Well, all right, you send me the material, huh? Yes, thank you. I'll see you then, Mr. Rogers. Bye. Hello. Oh, yes, Harry, dear. Bye. Uh, just a minute now, look. Wait a minute. Oh. Honey? Yeah, it's here. Page two. Mm-hmm. Oh. Well, no, you go ahead and catch the train, honey, and I'll bring it in later. Yeah. And one white handkerchief. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, honey. They're all in the wash. Uh, no, no, never mind. I'll rinse one out for you. Don't be silly, honey. It's my fault for putting off the washing. Yeah. Before 12. Yes, dear. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll be there. Yeah. Bye. Oh, dear. Now, don't let me forget that. Oh. Uh, just a minute, Mrs. Perkins. Good morning. How are you? Come on in. 
no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mrs. Ferguson. I haven't time. Oh? I'm sorry, too, that you always have to bring this to your attention. But your dog has been breaking into my yard and bothering my Nancy. Oh, I'm so sorry. Nancy's a very old dog, and she's very sweet. And really and truly, I think this I'm is going to... I'm terribly sorry. Really, I am. I'll tell you what, I'll tie Casey up for a few days. I promise. I'll only let him out when the kids are around to look after him. How's that? Oh, well, I hope it works this time. Nancy's a very old dog. Yes. And very sweet. Yeah, I know, I know. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Ferguson. Good morning. Good morning, Miss Perkins. That dog is going to be death of me, yeah. No reason at all. I just sat there, bawling like a baby. I, I, I don't know why I was crying. I, 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 I couldn't stop, though. It's got to be a reason, Betty. Well, it's none that I know of. You know, Harry and I have a, a good marriage, and we have three healthy, happy children. We have more than enough social life. No real money problems. We have a nice house, full of paid for appliances. So what's wrong? You tell me. Maybe I need some vitamin pills or one of those new wonder drugs you're always hearing about. What makes you think that? Oh, I don't know. I just feel sort of run down. M mentally, I mean. I just seem to have lost all my enthusiasm. Everything used to have such a meaning for me, Dr. Wade, and lately I feel myself just doing things and not really caring, just doing things to get them done, to go on to some other chores to get those done. Am I making any sense at all? Why am I bothering you with this? Should have gone to a psychiatrist, I guess. Well, I know you pretty well, Betty. Maybe I can help. Well, Dr. Wade, you've got more common sense than anybody I know, and that's why I came to you. Thank you, Betty. Now, uh, when you were a child, did you have a place that you went to? You know, a place you thought of as your own? Yes, there... There was a little cove at the beach uh, where we used to go for the summers. I, oh, gosh, I'd sit there for hours just dreaming about my life to be. And actually, my, my life is just exactly as I hoped it would turn out to be. Why am I so... It isn't unhappy. It's, it's worse than that, really. It, a dead feeling. Do you think you could follow instructions for a single day? Uh, I think so, yeah. Do as I say, no questions. All right, but please don't make it too complicated. You know, I'm juggler enough as it is. You'll have to give me a day, or rather, give yourself a day. Dr. Wade, I haven't got a day of my own that I can give. Find one. I'm the doctor, and that's part of the treatment. So far, it's impossible. But go on. I want you to get in your car, drive to the beach. Yes? So to arrive there at 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock? Look, the kids aren't even off for school until 8.30, and sometimes Harry takes a later train, and if he does, I have You're to go to in. You're to arrive not later than 9 o'clock on the nose. And? Take a little lunch along. That's all. No books, no magazines, no pencils, papers. You're not to read 
listen to the radio, or talk to anybody. Here. These prescriptions are to be taken every three hours. They're numbered. Are you serious? You wouldn't think I'm joking when you get my bill. Nine, twelve, three, six. That's right. Take the first prescription at nine when you arrive and the last at six. And I'm supposed to just sit on the beach all day long alone. Yes, alone. <laughs> you know, I'm one old fogey who thinks this togetherness business has gone altogether too far. Oh, being together is fine, but a lot of time being alone is finer. In fact, necessary. Togetherness. You know, it's gotten so in this country, if you express a desire to be alone, you're some sort of a nut, unsocial, or up to something devious. Nine, twelve, three, six. That's right. Yes. Well, all right, I'll, I'll have these filled on the way home, okay? Those prescriptions are filled. They're loaded. Oh? And uh, they're not to be read till the prescribed hour. Goodbye. Goodbye, Betty. Goodbye, Dr. Hayes. Well, not too bad a day for the beach. Ten to eight already? Oof. Step on it. I'll never make it by nine. Oh, honestly, Mr. Move it or milk it. Oh, I hope Polly Ann doesn't overload that crazy dishwasher again. I, I don't know why I'm in such a rush. Nothing to do when I get there but sit. that kooky kid home from school again today after I told him not to. I'm going to kill him. Almost. You're not to read or listen to the radio or talk to anybody. Nine, on the nose. Okay, doctor. Here we go. Now, let's see. Six, three, twelve, nine. Listen carefully. To what? You told me not to turn on the radio or talk to anyone. Listen carefully. <laughs> well, there's nothing to listen to. Nothing but the ocean. The waves. The waves come in and the waves go out. A day of listening to that could be pretty boring. Seagulls. I love seagulls. They're pretty. Not really, though. They have funny faces. What's their color? So white against the blue sky. Prettiest color combination in the world. No. No, I guess not. I guess a Siamese cat is the prettiest color combination. Jet. Nothing to listen to there. I wonder where it's going. No, wherever. It's practically there right now. I wonder what birds think of everything. I mean, after all, the sky belonged to them for so long, and then overnight it's filled with <laughs> big, roaring monsters. 
first must be tolerance. Tolerance. I'm glad we have birds. Well, back to listening. fine-tuning here. The waves win. I wonder if there's sounds beneath the sounds. There must be. Wind in the grass. I'll bet a dog could hear it. Of course, he's closer to it. Rustles, just like taffeta. I've just got to finish Polly Ann's costume or she'll be naked on that stage. Never mind, that's tomorrow. Right now, you're supposed to be listening carefully. Hmm, sand feels so good. Is there a sound to those moving bits of sand? Or do I imagine? There is. Oh, honestly, get up. If anyone sees you like this, they'll think you're bombing. Great big ocean. The immensity of it. Seems to go on forever. Forever is eternity. What was that little story Miss Holliday used to tell us about the ocean, the bird, and eternity? If a sparrow took one beak full of water from the ocean once every million years, and after he had emptied all of the oceans, all of the seas, and all of the waters in the whole world, that would be just the beginning of eternity. as difficult to grasp now as it was then. Eternity. Now, where did that wave come from, I wonder? And where will it go? The rhythm. The beautiful rhythm. The seemingly meaningless rhythm. But it's not. It's a well-thought-out pattern. It's all a pattern. And I'm a part of it. Just like the ocean is. A part of the whole pattern. My, we learn a lot from the ocean. Patience. Very early in life we learn you cannot hurry the time. Boy, be careful. Wait, wait. A Awareness. Awareness of the vast interdependence of things. Wind, tide, current, calm, squall, and hurricane. All combining to influence the paths birds above, the fish below, and man everywhere. And the cleanliness of the ocean. She's a good housekeeper. 
every beach swept twice a day with a great broom of the sea. There's that rhythm again. The plan. The pattern. Mmm. My tummy. I must be hungry. No wonder it's almost 12. Thinking of things outside oneself certainly makes the time fly. 12 o'clock. Time for another prescription. Try reaching back to happy times. Now why? I'm not concerned with the past. It's right now I'm worried about. Oh well. market you can buy jams and jellies much better I'm sure but I love to wash the berries and cook them and add the sugar and the patterns I love the patterns will you bring me that lemon juice honey I like to stand here and stir this big pot I don't know why I can remember my mother standing here over this very kettle thank you honey and the smells I love the smells. The sweet of the fruit and the funny out of the paraffin. Best of all, I can think. My hands are busy with a task they know how to do, so my mind's free to search about looking for answers and asking for guidance. I must confess, child, the sight of all those jars on that freshly papered shelf does fill me with pride. I know it's not the best jam in the world. But I made it. And the sight of your faces when you spread it on bread, that's the best part of all. Yes, Mama was always happiest when she was doing for others. And Papa. Oh, it's been so long since I've really thought of Papa. He worked so hard. But he used to say it was a man's privilege to work hard for his family. Hmm. Sweetest smile. It must have been terribly hard for him sometimes to have that smile for us. But he was never without it. Well, today after the circus, we'll all go over to Mrs. McDonald's fountain and have ourselves a hot fudge sundae with nuts and whipped cream. <laughs> Good. I know three people I won't have to cook dinner for tonight. Oh, don't be too sure. Remember, we're going to walk to the circus and back, aren't we? No use giving that money to the streetcar lines when we can use it at Mrs. McDonald's, right? Right, Pa. <laughs> Come on now, you drink your milk, kitten. And you too, brother. Come yes. On. Oh, yes, Mr. Myers. He's right here. Just a minute, sir. Mr. Myers. I don't know what he wants in my day off. Hello. Oh, Mr. Myers? Oh, yes, sir. 
this afternoon? Oh, I see. But, uh, couldn't it wait? Yes, sir. Well, no, I'm sorry, Mr. Myers, but it would be impossible for me to come in today. I'll be in the first thing tomorrow, and I'll take care of it then. Good day, sir. Frank, was he angry? Well, he didn't sound overjoyed. But you know, the circus does keep coming back. I know, but childhood doesn't. Come on now, kids, get ready. It's gonna take us a good 20 minutes to walk, and we don't want to miss the big parade, do we? Yeah, we're really going. Here, Betty, dear, don't forget your apple. Okay, where's my hand? It was such a little thing, but I'll never forget it. It's as alive in me today as the day we went to that circus. I can feel the same warmth in my stomach just thinking about it. It's true. No kindness is ever wasted as long as it's remembered. Go on, Betty. Try reaching back to happy times. All right? Now, let's see. What was the very happiest time in my life? What was it? I think... I think the night Randy was born. Harry had promised me he wouldn't under any circumstances leave me for even five seconds. And I remember when I finally woke up in my room. My first flash of consciousness wasn't of my baby, my firstborn, but of Harry. And I couldn't wait to open my eyes to see if he was there. He was there, true to his word. Yes, that started my happiest day. It's a boy. I know. Oh. You said it would be a boy, didn't you? I was so delighted that Harry had guessed right. At that moment, I wanted him to be the biggest part of it. The most important part of the birth. I squeezed his hand with a strength I didn't know I had left in me. It's too early for you to see the baby. So why don't you try and get a little more sleep? Please. A boy, a little boy. How many pounds? Seven pounds, 12 ounces. That's very good, isn't it? Calling him he, that's no name. Well, you said if he was a boy, you wanted to name him after your brother. I loved Harry more right then than I thought possible. I hadn't mentioned naming our first baby after my brother, but I had thought of it so often. Poor Randy. Dead somewhere in the Pacific. I wonder how Harry knew I had dreamed of naming our son Randy. Randy was such a sweet boy. And well, Harry must have read my mind. We were even closer than I thought. They say the first son should be named after his father. I'll name no son of mine, Harry. If you like, we can call the next one David. <laughs> I can stomach my middle name, but <laughs> Harry. I like Harry. I love Harry. And oh, I love you so much. Aren't we just so lucky? Get some sleep. <laughs> you won't go away, will you? No. 
He'll be right here when I wake up, won't you? I'll be here. Oh. Oh, that was a delicious sleep. Everything was right with my world. Until I woke up. No, Harry. As much as I loved him before, I hated him at that moment. How dare he leave me, the mother of his newborn son. Men, insensitive beasts. Oh, I really carried on all right. I... Where were you? Oh, honey, a guy does have to attend to a few things. But you said you'd be here. Oh, honey, I had to shave. Oh. I don't even remember what I had for breakfast this morning, but I'll never forget that kiss as long as I live. That was 13 years ago. The man in my arms was my life, all rolled up into one being. Harry is still just as important, more important. Only that morning, I was aware of it. Not only of Harry, but of life itself. I had stayed awake since dawn, waiting for my son, appreciating every moment of it. I was anxious for the time to pass, and yet I wanted to hang on to every bit of it. Like waiting for the first sliver of light on Christmas morning. Times of anticipation put everything sharply into focus. The footsteps from the hall. The heavy pat of the doctors and the male orderlies. The light, quick trip of the nurses. And the pedestrian pace of the visitors. Would those be the footsteps of the nurse bringing my baby? But I was bypassed. It seemed the traffic would never stop at my door. And then I prayed for the footsteps to pause and the doorknob to turn. And at last, my prayers were answered. My baby. Yes, I'll be honest. At that moment, Harry was forgotten. This baby was mine. All mine. That was the moment in my life. My one flash of real and complete understanding. I knew all about everything as I studied that tiny miracle snuggled next to me. Exactly what I knew then, I don't know now. But at that time, my mind was sparking silver thoughts. I didn't care about the past or the future. Just the fullness of that moment. His breathing and my breathing, our breathing together. His look to me. <laughs> Needing me. But he still needs me today. Thirteen and running for president of his class. In years to come, I wonder. Will I think back to the morning I made the poster for Randy? Will I remember the look on his face as he set out to meet his first major triumph or defeat? Did I see the look on his face? Did I take time? Or did I just let the moment rush by? Three o'clock already. <laughs> Time for another prescription. Re-examine your motives. There's nothing wrong with my motives. I don't think. 
I want to be a good wife, a successful mother. But what woman doesn't? I want a certain amount of recognition. But then, doesn't everybody? I want security for my family and myself. I'd like a certain amount of self-expression, more than I have. I guess I'd like to be doing something more important. Just what I don't know, because I'm not gifted in any special way, but... Well, sometimes when people ask me what I do, I'd like to be able to answer more than I'm a housewife. Why is that? Taking care of my family and my home used to satisfy me completely. Not really. What more could a woman want out of life? That's her function. But sometimes it does seem a little trivial, I guess. Giving a drib here and a drab there. Great big pie with everybody grabbing their share. Then it's more recognition I want. Could be. A man has his boss to tell him whether he's doing his job well or not. And the kids get report cards from their teachers, but a housewife. A housewife never hears from anybody. Oh, a grunt here and a that tastes good there, but I guess what's bothering me, what I'm questioning right now is. Is it all worthwhile? Are the dribs and the drabs going to add up to a successful life? Or will I look back one day and say, well, old girl, you really wasted it away. Is my being important? How could it be? Nothing important ever happens to me. My life is made up of a million tiny moments. How I love one big moment. Like Donna Rossi. She married Arnold Rossi and they had two sons. Donna was always the talented one. I always thought she'd be an actress. But she surprised everyone by becoming a writer. I remember her reading stories to us that she wrote about her family. Her mother and father were such characters. She'd write a little story, read it to the club, and we'd all have a good laugh. That was all there was to it. Then someone told her that she should put them together as a book. She did, and it was published. And that was the beginning of the end of Mrs. Arnold Rossi. She went away to New York. I remember we gave her a going away party at the library. But we didn't realize we were really saying goodbye to her. She stayed six months that trip, and then came home for a while, and then off to New York again to make a play out of her book. I used to see Arnold at church with the boys. I'd ask him for news about Donna, and after a while, I'd stop asking. I sensed he didn't know much more about her activities than I did. It was a sad sight, Arnold and the boys kneeling together in church. I could guess what Arnold was praying for. But Donna didn't come back, and Arnold found company elsewhere. I didn't see him in church anymore. The boys came by themselves for a while, and then finally, only Bob, the younger one, showed up on occasion. The older boy got in some sort of trouble over a car, I think. He had to go away to a school. I think he's back now. Yes, he must be, because at the reunion, Donna said, Arnold and the boys are here. Yes, thank you. Ladies, can the meeting please come to order? It's been a long time since we all gathered. Three years, almost to the day. I'm ashamed to admit it, Donna, but the literary club literally died of a broken heart. Oh, yeah. This will always be my home. After all, I was born here. And Arnold and the boys are still here. And Jane's very civilized. She said more than once that the boy's mother will always be welcome in her house. So, you're not rid of me yet. Not completely. She said she was happy. And maybe she is. 
She said she always wanted to break out and be somebody. And she did. How dull we must have appeared to her. Drab housewives. Hometown girls vegetating into hometown matrons. Why am I so happy? Yeah. Because I have freedom. Complete freedom to do as I please. To think, create, to live. At last I have freedom. No. No, I don't believe that. I don't believe that you can achieve personal freedom at the expense of others. What did Donna start out to do? Keep a diary about her family because she wanted to put down some happy memories of her childhood. Now all she wants to do is write a second book that will become a bestseller and bring her more fame, more recognition. Maybe that's why she can't write it. Looking past the job itself to the rewards that it will bring. Recognition. Self-importance. Yes. Therein lies the thorn. And it's my thorn, too. Because I'm looking past my job to rewards I think it should bring. My work as a wife and mother used to be an end in itself. My happiest day, the day Randy was born. Why did I feel so fulfilled, so complete? Because I was fulfilling my function, my purpose in life. I was doing my job the best I could and appreciating it at the moment. I used to enjoy everything while I was doing it. Now I can't wait until the meal is over to hear some praise or this job done to be congratulated. It's only natural to want to be praised, I guess. But a little praise goes a long way. A little too much can develop a selfish pride. Poor Donna. And it can happen so easily, so unsuspectingly. Yes, it is true. Love is its own reward. Then is it the big things done? Or the little things done with great love. I wonder. Mama certainly knew what she was talking about. It is satisfying to take a quiet moment and let the mind fly about, searching for answers. Dr. Wade is right, too. Togetherness is fine, but a lot of the time, aloneness can be much finer, even necessary. problems in the sand. But I don't have any. Real ones, I mean. Oh, but I must. Every human being has problems. Now, let's see. Arguments with Harry? Yes. I can't even remember what the last one was about. Oh, yes, I can. I was in our room getting dressed. had me worried. Well, I think I like that. Well, you know what I mean. I ought to be on time tonight, of all nights. Well, there's one sure thing. What? They can't give the plaque to anyone else. It has your name on it. Oh, how do you know? They always do. Oh, yeah, that's right. You're excited? Yes, I think I am a little. You know, when I started that City Beautiful campaign, I had no idea I'd get an award for it. Well, you deserve it. Yeah. You've been beautifying the city for years just by living in it. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you think so, dear. Dinner's all set, Harry. Kids are going to have it in the kitchen, and Polly Ann is going to serve you and Mr. Dover in the dining room so that you can get all your points in without any interruptions, you know? Well, that won't be necessary because he isn't coming. What do you mean he isn't coming? He already submitted the whole idea to Mr. Jebs yesterday. Without you? Well, yes. Well, Harry, that's not fair. That was your idea, not his. Anyway, you only told him about it in the first place. So you wouldn't go over his head. I, I just think it's... I know, honey, I know, but after all... Oh, after all, nothing. Harry, sometimes you make me so mad. You let people walk all over you. Oh, it's 
Why can't you just stir up a little fire once in a while? Betty, I am what I am, and I don't think I want to stir up any fire. There's enough fire in the world already. Oh, Harry, that kind of thing. Look, this isn't the first idea, nor will it be the last that I ever dream up for the sales department. Well, that's just not the point. It's not fair. It's not right at all. And it's not right that you should let him get away with it either. Well, if I know Dover, he'll trip himself up one of these days. People yeah. like that always do. Yeah, well, a lot of good that'll do you then. Here. Oh, Harry, you've just got to learn to fight for your rights. Betty, there are other ways of fighting for your rights than by bickering about them. If I plowed in there now, what good would it do? I'd only succeed in embarrassing him and myself and Mr. Jebs. Well, at least Mr. Jebs know the truth of the matter. Well, honey, Dover has a sick wife. She has polio. She's been in an iron lung for eight months. Now, what do you want me to do? Furnish the straw which might break the camel's back. Oh. Now, I filled a gas tank on the way home. And smile. People getting awards should smile. Mother! Coming, Randy! Harry. I'll be right down. All right. If you want to say something to me, find me and say it, but don't yell. Now, what? I'm sorry. Well? Mrs. Patton called and said she'd pick you up. Oh, fine. Thanks. She'll be here in two minutes. Yeah, okay. She said for you to remember to bring the list for Thursday's meeting. <gasps> I would have forgotten it. Thanks. Gee, Mom, you look nice. Oh, thanks. No, I mean it. You do. Mother, what, honey? Say, these glasses are these. I forget. Well, it really doesn't make any difference, Polly M, because Mr. Dover isn't coming anyway. Oh, Mother, why not? Well, never mind, Polly Ann. You can play hostess some other time. Go and put another place on the kitchen table for Daddy. David, you hurry up and finish your homework, then you can look at television tonight. It's Friday, remember? I wish it wasn't a ladies' club. Then I can go with you and watch you get your prize. Well, honey, quite frankly, I'm glad it is, because I'm nervous enough as it is without having the whole family sitting there staring at me. You know? Gee, Mom, I wouldn't make you nervous. Well, of course not. Maybe you don't realize it, but we're your best audience. Oh, Harry. Oh, there's Perky. Goodbye, sweetie. I'll see you later. Good Goodbye, night, kids. Mom. Harry's right. They are my best audience. Harry's right about so many things. It's a blessing to have a husband who really does think of others. Then I guess my main problem is that I don't recognize the blessings I already have. A wonderful, kind husband. Three obedient, loving children. Yes. That's it. Unawareness. Unawareness of my blessings. right now. Yes. I'm going to take a few minutes every day for self-re-examination. And every month, a day at the beach for the major overhaul. 